So before me right here is a trolling motor, battery box, and speed control box. So what's been the holdup on this video? We're about to take a look. All right, don't start taking notes. Um, so this is the uh, control box, uh, power meter, uh, forward reverse selector, I go forward there, neutral, reverse, and the actual speed control. Now the issue has been, let's just put this in forward, watch the blade. It should be running right now. And look at it, it's just going to start to clip, clip, clip. And then suddenly it comes on. I believe if I change out the pulse width modulator in this box, that problem's gonna go away, which will lead me to what the actual overall problem is. All right, before we get into this, uh, into the battery box itself, and this is, you're just getting a sneak peek at it right now because it's about to change again, I think. And so I have a feeling that when I change this out, and the new pulse width modulator works. This here is the pulse width modulator right there. Uh, circuit breaker. Uh, and this is my 100 amp 12 volt mini. So you're gonna disassemble this, uh, take out the pulse width modulator, put the new one in. I think the problem is gonna be solved. But before we get into that, I wanna show you what I thought it was at first. So this blade, which as you can see is used and abused, had this mono wrapped up in it from the monocacy and it's pretty clear that some of it melted. Now, if you look at where the shear pin goes, look at that. And so I thought that this was actually the problem. And that, by the way, the uh, shear pin was absolutely, uh, that was such a pain to get out of the motor. So new prop, new shear pin, all that stuff. But so what I thought was happening was at, at the lower speeds, it was just unable to turn because there's nothing really to turn on and then centrifugal force would take over. No, that wasn't it at all. All right, so this here is a little dry bag with tools that stay on the kayak. And there's a couple more things in there, a couple switches. Other crap. What am I going to need here? Don't need that. Don't need that. Need that and that, I think. All right. First things first, we're going to pop the breaker. Center that up. So the, the breaker has a little kill switch right there. So we no longer have power going to anything important. Negative post off. I have to remove the battery to get to the pulse width modulator. It's not that big of a deal. It's not super easy to pop out, but it will pop out. All right. There's our doctor prepare, 100 amp hour, 12.8 mini. This thing is small in comparison to other 12 volt batteries of that capacity. All right, so what we're gonna do now is remove the pulse width modulator. I've got an exact replacement Move the power connectors. And the pulse width modulator is now uh, disconnected. And let's just go ahead and swap that out. Keep those there. All right, we don't need any of that because all that stuff is already installed. And 
yep, we got the exact same connectivity. Just wanted to make sure because every once in a while you'll order something. And if they can't find the exact one, they'll send you another one. Get our main cables out of the way. Pop the battery back in. So the whole point of this is, I believe it's more just confirmation that what I think is going on is the actual problem. All right, so that's as easy as it is to swap out my pulse width modulator on my, whoops, on my branded battery box. I, I've got some of these stickers, if anybody wants one. Uh, let me know in the comment section. All right, so I'm gonna flip our breaker. Wires are, are the only reason I, my wires never look like this. The only reason they look like that is because I've been having so much trouble. And we're gonna get to that. And what I think the cause is. This is pretty much probably gonna affirm that I'm right about it and is going to make me probably change to an electronic speed control as opposed to a pulse width modulator. Let's check it out. I get the motor and controller reattached to the battery box and figure out if I'm right or not. All right, motor. And remember, this is a uh, 46 pound thrust uh, Newport NV series, which I kind of thought was a little bit overkill for the Manta, and I'm probably right. If I were to do this system again, I probably wouldn't go any bigger than a 36 pound thrust motor with it. Unless I was a heavier guy, but I'm 5'10", 160. I don't need automatic thrust. You know, I don't need the thing to get up and go like a race car. Uh, the top speed between the 36, the 46, the 55, it's all gonna be the same. Uh, the only thing you're, you're gaining is immediate takeoff power. And uh, the big thing that you're losing is uh, uh, battery life. Um, although I haven't had a problem with this, I'm almost certain that I could probably get through two days of uh, using the trolling motor on a, on a mellow river before I run out of juice. I haven't done that yet, because I can't get a pulse width modulator to last long enough in this scenario. We're gonna get to that in a second. This is how the control box connects up. It does it via two cat fives, or actually cat six. All right, control box back up. It's going forward. All right, that's not it. That's not the problem. So I'm guessing it's either the switch or the potentiometer. Huh, okay. Folks, this is why I haven't made this video yet. I thought that the motor was gonna come up nice and smooth, but it, it's all jerky. Whoops, I'm not on. Let's try it in reverse. See, that's a little more smooth. You actually have low speed. But when I'm in forward, yeah, look how jerky that is. Crazy. And, and there, see, it'll stop. And this has nothing to do, you know, nothing's bent here. The motor isn't damaged. At least, fuck, I don't think so. And one way that I can kind of prove that is Say I'm out in the field and my pulse width modulator takes a crap. Well, I can just plug this. Uh, this Anderson bypasses that completely. 
And there we go, we're 100% speed. Just right, as simple like that. Now one of the things that concerns me is if I'm in, uh, if I'm on the pulse width modulator and even if I crank it all the way up, and we're getting full current, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on. I think maybe the potentiometer is bad. Damn. At any rate, this is exactly why I have not made this video. It's not reliable, and it's definitely not reliable on the water. So, um, and this kind of sucks because I know today looks nasty, dreary, but uh, the weather this coming week is just going to be absolutely awesome. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two solutions for it. One, you know, where I can wire it with the pulse width modulator and the other where I can uh, do it with an electronic speed control, which is probably desired at this point. At any rate, uh, I'm going to try like heck next weekend to get that video out. Um, I know this hasn't been helpful, but I wanted to explain to you guys why I haven't done this video. It's, I've, I've probably said this five or six times that this video is coming, but I need to make sure everything's gonna be reliable because I don't wanna send you on a mission to uh, duplicate the system and then it's not reliable for you. Uh, it's not good for you. It's not good for my reputation, so I'm not gonna do it. I need this stuff to be reliable before I can recommend you guys a, a speed control system. Now, my theory going into this was that the pulse width modulator um, doesn't like the lithium polymer battery because the uh, the resting voltage actually the operating voltage of uh, lithium polymer compared to either sealed lead acid or or uh, gel battery the like uh, marine deep cycle all which are really really heavy so i would never want that i would go to uh, you know lithium polymer this battery is probably the smallest 100 amp battery out there and probably the lightest too and this entire box weighs about 23 pounds but at any rate um i thought i was burning out pulse width modulators because it didn't like the voltage of uh the lithium polymer and it appears I may be wrong. Sorry, this is gonna take a little longer, but again, I can't recommend things that aren't working well for me. That, that would be stupid. It would, you wouldn't like me after that. And uh, I, I would be willing to bet that my channel statistics would absolutely tank. So, I was going to uh, potentiometer. Uh, this, that's the actual speed controller. Uh, that wasn't it either. <laughs> However, and this is kind of interesting, I loosened up the prop nut a little bit. And look at that. The thing is, The thing is, um, I don't start to see the problems that I have on the water until I've been in there for a few hours. And, you know, in the, mainly it's usually on the trip back up from where I start. And it's usually fairly deep into that trip back up. So something is overheating. I don't think it's the motor, uh, and again, I have a way to just, if I disconnect from there, plug it into there, we're full speed. So I have a good way to get back, um, <laughs> just at full speed. Um, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to take it out and test it, but I'm also gonna build it the other way. I think all I really need for that is uh, 
another one of these cases. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That way, if it screws up, uh, and I believe it will, uh, I, I'm, I gotta say, I'm back to what I originally thought, and that the additional voltage coming from the lithium polymer is overheating the pulse width modulator and then the pulse width modulator doesn't want to play. Uh, I mean, it still plays, but it doesn't play as well. At any rate, uh, I am going to piecemeal this together so you guys uh, have something from me tomorrow because it's been a couple of weeks since I've released a video. And I also uh, kind of want you to see my struggles with this uh, because I don't want you to experience them yourself. You know, you can go to, uh, what's that, Axe Maniac uh, channel and he builds these things all the time. He, d he does uh, pulse width modulator systems, uh, ESCs, but his entire demonstration of it working is about 30 seconds. And I mean, look, I can do the same thing. Here, look, my stuff works. There's your forward. Whoops, what did I, what did I do? Oh, I'm not plugged in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can do that same thing. Hey, look, there it goes. There goes the motor's going. All right, cool. And then, you know, neutral, reverse, does that. Takes it up to full throttle. Takes it back down. And that's the end of his video. I can do that here all day long. Uh, my concern is how reliable it's going to be on the water, particularly since most of us are going to be on the water in a kayak. It's definitely going to be spring through fall, and the big concern is summer. And because things get a lot hotter in the summer. My cameras overheat all the time in the summer, and it, there's no reason to think in a million years that a pulse width modulator or even an electronic speed control isn't gonna do the same thing. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for this one. I'm sorry I don't have a really good, reliable answer for you right now. Um, I trust Axe Maniac. Um, I trust a couple of other people that this stuff absolutely can work not sure that I trust that they can be totally reliable and that's what we're trying to do totally reliable fairly inexpensive you know something that you're not going to have to screw with all the time I you know we're out there to fish not engineer so if we can get the engineering done uh, and finalized and not have to worry about it anymore that's that's the goal here and to do it as inexpensively as possible at any rate folks that's going to do it for this one i'm out shire is out we'll see you on the next one